your final call news article is entitled War on the Horizon, Israel Unleashes Devastating Offensive on Palestinians. Is Israel escalating the conflict by amassing ground troops in this latest offense? Well, it is. I mean, Israel is doing what Israel has always done. The amassing of ground troops against a defenseless Palestinian people, um, you know, it tells the story of the lopsidedness of Israel. I mean, they say that they're fighting the resistance group Hamas, who have been shelling rockets really in self-defense, not even in, in offense, but in self-defense of what Israel has been doing uh, to the occupied uh, uh, population of Palestinians. And so by them putting ground troops along with this bombardment of air raids that have been going on since uh, since the um, since the tenth of May, uh, it only exacerbates things, and it's only again a testimony of what Israel have always done. Now, the Israeli Defense Force announced in a May thirteenth tweet that um, IDF air and ground troops are currently attacking the Gaza Strip. How does the buildup of Israeli troops compare to the 2014 Gaza war that killed an estimated 2,100 Palestinians? Well, again, it's, you know, it, it bears witness to um, the viciousness of the occupied forces of Israel. You know, when we look at the Zionist state of Israel, and we look at the situation in Palestine, it is a situation of an occupier versus an occupied people. And so in 2014, uh, when things escalated then, they went all out and, and was killing like it was no tomorrow. And, you know, and of course that number uh, is a is a heavy number, 2,000, and, and both women and children were in that number of day. And most of these were civilians. These were, these were not um, what you call militants. You know, these were not, again, the resistance fighting fighters of Hamas or Islamic Jihad uh, uh, who are over there defending and over there fighting the occupiers of their land. These are mostly civilians. And so this, this really is comparable because of the day after day, night after night bombardment, even against the uh, um, demands of the international community that is saying to Israel, you must stop this, you know? And the only ones that are not saying this are the only ones that are bucking against the world uh, demand for a ceasefire even <clears throat> is um, Israel's main benefactor, which is the United States of America. Okay. Now, more than 200 people have already been killed, uh, most of them Palestinian. And as you mentioned in the previous one, uh, some of them children. Why has Israel carried out attacks without regard for the innocent victims and essentially the collateral damage? Well, they, you know, because they really don't give a damn about the Palestinian people. <clears throat> Remember, Israel has been given this land 73 years ago in 1948 by the United States, by Britain, and the other uh, nations that belong to what was then called the League of Nations, which is now the United Nations. Again, as we talked about on this program, the United Nations before, and its lack of ability to deal with these kind of atrocities, one, because much of it was they were a part of it in the beginning. You know, but Israel don't see the Palestinians as people. Israel sees the Palestinians 
as animals <clears throat> and less than themselves. So when you don't see a, a, a fellow human being as a human being, then you will do what people do. If you see them as cockroaches, what do you do with a cockroach? You see a cockroach running across your room, you know, you're not about to have the uh, negotiations about how to coexist with it. No, you're gonna either spray it or go step on it. Right. And that's what the that's what the Israelis are doing to the poor Palestinian people. What parallels do I, I feel like they're obvious, but what parallels do you find between the treatment of the Palestinians in Israel and Black Americans here in the United States? Well, we are an occupied people as well. Unfortunately, because in the making of a slave and the violation of our humanity, we have been made to be disconnected from the reality of who we are. So we don't see ourselves as a colonized people. Black people see ourselves as Americans who are just in some circumstances, but it's worse than that. So our comparison to the Palestinian people is that we are also a marginalized people. We are a people who are under the uh, uh, act of genocide in many ways, different ways. So we compare very well to the Palestinian people. And that means also that we should also be in support of the Palestinian struggle. As they came in support over the last year, over the killing of George Floyd, when the rest of the world rose up against what was going on with black people in this country and the police genocide against us, the Palestinian people was also in that mix. So we, this is the time for the suffering masses of the world to connect. So we have we have a similarity that can bring us together. Okay. Now Hamas confirmed the Gaza Brigade commander Bassem Issa was killed in an Israeli attack. Uh, how will Hamas respond to the killing of their leader? Well, they said that more of their own will willingly die. See, we have to understand that these are people who recognize that it is better, it is better to die than to live the life of a slave, you know? It is better. They love death more than people and their oppressors love life. See, the Israelis, these people who have stolen this Palestinian land, who is being backed by the uh, most powerful nation on the earth in this thievery, mm -hmm. they, want, they, they are doing all that they can to have a future and to live. The Palestinians are saying, no, we would rather die trying to uh, get our freedom and justice back. They're not even talking about equality because there is no equality with an occupier. There is no equality with somebody who is uh, uh, who has been a murderer of your people for 73 years and it don't seem like there is any kind of let up or desire to change. You don't try to change that reality. You get rid of that reality. Right. So, yeah, so the Palestinian people no, they, they, no, they, they would rather die. That's what, that's what freedom loving people want. Because what is the worth of life if you have no justice? What is the worth of life if you have no freedom? See, what is the worth of life if your very humanity is subjugated by another people, backed by other people? No, we will, what do we have to lose? We will fight. Right. Let us pause for announcements from our sponsors, Brother Brian. After the break, we will return to discuss the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. We'll be right back. 
Be a part of the force that powers truth in journalism. Your support helps to combat false media. Cash App NNV News. Greetings from National Network View. This week's final call cover story headline memorializes the late, great DMX. Last week, DMX's life was celebrated at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Large crowds gathered to honor the legend. They were there to remember a man who wasn't afraid to express his pain with the world. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan spoke via Zoom to the large audience. He delivered words of comfort, wisdom, and guidance to everyone under the sound of his voice. DMX will live on. This FCM volume number 29 edition features the middle page article as a transcript of what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said at the memorial. To read more, subscribe to FinalCallDigital.com and tune in to the all new Final Call Radio. This is the NNVNews.com Final Call Cover Report. This is Sister Sajda Muhammad. We are proud to announce that the Sajda House commemorative Elijah coins are finally here. This priceless heirloom made from recycled copper from the messenger's home is now available at SajdaHouse.com. Please make sure you leave your comments and questions in the comment section below. Follow us on Facebook, National Network View, and make sure uh, to check us out on Twitter as well, National Network View. This is Sergio Gutierrez with National Network View, signing off.